Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on the two-string method in Java. So, all objects in Java um, have the object class as their ultimate parent. So, if I create my own class here, it will have object secretly as, um, as its parent, as the class that it actually um, derives from. Um, and we're going to look at inheritance um, very shortly in this series of tutorials. But for now, I want to show you some of the standard methods that the object class has and that therefore every um, class in Java, every object also has. So if I create an object here, I'll call it obj and I'll just say obj equals new object like this. Um, and then if I go obj dot and press control return in Eclipse to get the autocomplete suggestions. You can see that um, obj has a whole bunch of methods here and um, notify, notify all and the various kinds of weight. I actually go through in my series on multi-threading. That's quite advanced so I won't cover that here. But in these beginners tutorials I am going to cover um, hash code and probably in the next tutorial, the equals or dot equals method. And also um, in this tutorial, I'm going to look at the two string method. So um, let's create a class here and I'll just call it, um, it's going to be very simple. So I'll call it, um, or why not call it frog? Um, and I'm not going to give frog any methods just for the moment, but I'll say frog, frog one equals new frog like this and again if I do frog one dot um, and invoke the autocomplete you can see it's going to have all these methods because it has inherited all these methods from the object class that is secretly the parent of the frog of the frog class and um, in particular it's got a two string method and the two string method is really, really useful for helping to debug your applications. So let's see how it works. Um, I'll start by giving frog a very simple two string method. So um, the header of two string looks like this. It's public string to string lowercase o at uh, lowercase t capital S. And it takes no arguments. And uh, of course it has to return a string. So uh, I'm gonna just here, I'll create a string. Um, and in fact, what I'll do is I'll just say return. And, I, and for the moment, I'll just say return hello like this. So I'm just returning a string here. Um, and if now, if I do sys out down here, so control space. And if I now do sys out on my frog, one like this and I run this um, as a Java application it's going to actually output hello because when you do system.out.println on an object it um, tries to invoke the two string method to get a string representation of that object and if you don't have a any two string method defined for your object so let's just comment this out to take this away again then you can still do system.out.println and what happens is you get this so you get the class name and you get a at sign and you get something here that looks like a memory address but it's actually um, called the hash code it's like a kind of unique identifier for all your um, objects um, in Java and we're going to look at the hash code uh, in a, probably um, quite soon in a future tutorial. So I'll put this in again for now. And the real use of um, the two string method is of course you can create a string representation of your object that enables you to identify that object, which is really helpful for debugging. So let's say that a frog has a name. So let's say this is public string name and uh, let's give it an ID as well. So let's say, in fact, I should make that private and I'll give it a private int um, 
ID like this. And let's say that the frog constructor allows you to set those values. So int ID and string name. And in the constructor, I'll just do this.id equals id and this.name equals name. Um, oh yeah, it's capital. That should be lowercase i actually. Your variables should begin with um, lowercase letters in Java, really. And what I can do here is I'm going to actually use, I could do this. I could say, um, let's say return id plus and some punctuation plus name. And there's nothing too wrong with that. Um, and if I do that and I do system.out on a frog object, I've just got to, yeah, I've got to give it um, obviously a value for the ID and name. So let's give it seven for the ID and Bob for the name. And if I run this, actually, maybe Freddy for a frog, Freddy the frog. So if I run this, it's going to say seven colon Freddy. And of course, if I have um, multiple different objects, this will allow me to identify which one's which. So let's make this five. I'll call this one Roger and just do sysout frog two. So I'm getting now some useful output down here. Now there's nothing wrong really with this. It's just that it's a little bit inefficient because um, you've got a string object here and you're creating um, you've got a string object here as well and your uh, this is getting wrapped in a integer um, and a non-primitive integer type class and then converted to a string and then you're concatenating all those strings together and turning them into a new string so there's a lot of string objects flying about and a slightly more efficient way of doing it would be to use string builder so I say I can say string builder SB um, equals new string builder um, and then I can do sp dot append id um, dot append. Let's have some um, punctuation and dot append name. And then I can do return sp dot to string. So um, this this avoids. Um, uh, the inefficiency of concatenating strings because every time you put a plus between two string um, two strings you're basically creating a new string so um, as I mentioned in the last tutorial concatenation of strings is pretty inefficient which you might not care about in a simple program but this is um, a better way to do it because here we've just got one string builder object and you're using that to build up um, a single string from a bunch of different strings without creating any intermediate strings behind the scenes. Um, and if I run that now, then I get the same results as before. And of course you can use all the stuff that I showed you in the last tutorial here, like um, uh, if you wanna return like a formatted string, you know, you could use, for example, um, well, this is, this is one version of two string. Let's just quickly look at another possibility so you could also do, um, I think I hit the return, yeah, hit the insert key by mistake there. So you could also do, for example, um, if I comment that out, I could do return string dot format, and I could format this as, uh, let's see, percent, um, I'll give it a, a width of four characters for the ID, and that's an integer. Um, and this this should be in quotes. So this is a format string specifying how the string should look. Um, and this is this is stuff we covered in the last tutorial. And again, I'll have a colon there and then percent s to output the name. And now I just supply um, id and name. So I'm just using the string dot format method here to create a formatted string um, in the same style as kind of system dial dot print f print format. And again, we have the same results here. And I could, if I want, I could left align this with a negative sign. But you get the basic idea. Um, and that's, so that's two string for you. Um, very, very useful for debugging. 
and in the next tutorial um, we're going to look at the very important um, dot equals method that allows you to compare objects and, and this is all kind of stuff that will come up on a course or a interview possibly or exam um, so apart from being extremely useful it's also very useful for um, getting jobs or passing exams Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and this code will be, as always, on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.